I mean, what do you think? That's not my fault. Nedry complains that he has wasted the past two years having to fix things, only because Arnold has withheld information about what was being done on the island. Does this mean I don't get the money? All right, let's see what's wrong with our baby this time. Let's get this show on the road. Something wrong, Mr. Nedry? Oh, I, uh, oh, I, uh, I, uh, Nedry? Oh, I, uh, I, uh, oh, I accidentally got a diet soda by mistake. I'd better get another. Don't worry. Genuine article. You'll have to get used to the Dr. Malcolm. He suffers from a deplorable excess of personality, especially for a mathematician. Nedry. I don't know, but the power's offline. It must be offline. That's the alarm, sir. The power? It's gonna cause a danger to my employees in the park. Hammond, you're in the Jurassic Park business now. Do you understand me? Yes, I understand you perfectly well. I've been working here for several years! Jeez, Hammond. I didn't mean to upset you, but people's lives are at stake. Do you understand that? Their families and friends are worried. I know! Get Nedry in here. Here's where I paid you back for two years of my life being wasted, Hammond. Dennis Nedry, why am I not surprised? Listen, Hammond, the power's back online. I turned the alarm off. Nedry, do you remember that fellow I introduced you to today? Do you remember Peter Rosen from earlier? Our electrical technical support division was hit. Your co-worker, his life was taken by one of our newest assets. It won't happen again. You'd better hope not. There are consultants coming in this weekend. Not so fast. I have to introduce you to your new intern. Here he is. His name is Robert Plainswell, and he'll be studying you and learning all your computer techniques. Plainswell. Nice to meet you. You too, Nedry. Nice to meet you too. Well, I'll show you how we get started. We take digital format images and reformat them to our web service. We take images of all of our assets, all the animals, and post them to our online fan base. Then, from there, we get the word out about this place. Any findings on the Dramasaurid family helps change the way we think about dinosaurs. Grant remembers what he has learned about Dromaeosaurids. For decades, people held on to the misconception that all dinosaurs were big, lumbering brutes. Findings on the Velociraptors and others of the Dromaeosaurid family has changed all that. Alan, I said there's a helicopter landing. <laughs> Miss Shatler, how good it is to see you again. I trust the dinosaur business is uh, treating you well? John Hammond. Mr. Hammond? What brings you to the Badlands of Montana? Why, you two, of course. Hammond proposes a consulting job for them on his island off Costa Rica, telling them it's a dinosaur lover's dream. <laughs> Hammond leads the way into the complex. Shall we start by learning how we make dinosaurs? Sounds good. But what exactly is the job? Hammond explains. Here is where miracles are made. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Dr. Henry Wu. Sounds good. He enters a security code into the keypad next to the lab, and the door swings open. An oriental man in his mid-forties steps forward. You may not believe this, but all of our dinosaurs start here. Dr. Wu explains that it was dinosaur blood found in a mosquito trapped in amber that provided the scientists with a starting point. They were able to unlock the secrets of the dinosaur's DNA, the building blocks in all matter. It took some trial and error, such as having to add amphibian DNA to fill in some of the blanks, but we have been able to reproduce authentic dinosaurs. 
Wu also explains that the dinosaurs are all the same sex to control their population. Once we've uploaded our quota of technical images for the day, we go back to technical programming planes. Well, you think you can handle that? Gotta save them in that web suitable format. I hope I'm not interrupting anything too important. Robert Muldoon, welcome to the lab. <laughs> this is Robert Plainswell. He's our new intern here. Plainswell, nice to make your acquaintance. I'm Robert Muldoon, the, the park, park warden. warden. Nice to meet you. I'm Plainswell. Okay, Plainswell, so how's Nedry treating you these days? He's teaching me a lot about these systems, more than I could ever hope to learn. Ah, <laughs> he's got a sense of humor, this guy. Well, Nedry, thank you so much for fixing that power outage, but unfortunately it was too little too late. I watched Peter uh, Rosen. Peter Rosen, technical engineer. Killed before my eyes, unfortunately. Unfortunately, he lost his life in the struggle, and he's no longer with us. He'll always be remembered for... Uh, uh. <laughs> Will you two um, dig, up, dig up dinosaurs? Ian Malcolm, a mathematician who specializes in chaos theory, steps quickly into the room, taking everyone by surprise. Uh, well, Muldoon, if the dinosaurs don't get us, you'll scare us to death. Chaos issue. Chaos issue, actually. Okay. John doesn't subscribe to chaos, particularly what it has to say about a little science project. Oh, John, 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 John. John. Because I'm having the system in phase space. You've heard, of, you've heard of chaos theory? Malcolm gives a quick illustration as to what chaos theory is. No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life... Uh... Those raptors may be our salvation. We've got raptors on our tail. I plan to swing near the jungle in hopes they'll get distracted and leave us alone. Pick up our friends and go home. That is one big pile of shit. No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Hammond explains that he has spent the past five years creating a genetic sperm and gathering all the materials he needed to build a wildlife reserve for dinosaurs. Sounds wonderful. Then he created the dinosaurs to fill the reserve. As expert paleontologists and paleobotanists, tell me what you think. We've seen Brontosaurus and Triceratops, Spinosaurus and Stegosaurus. This is a paleontologist's paradise. But Grant is sure that they are close to the compound. I thought Wu said the dinosaurs were all the same sex to control the population. But he added amphibian DNA to their genes. Sadler explains that certain amphibians can actually change sex for reproduction purposes. And that must be what happened here. But Grant wonders... You're gonna give us an inferiority complex. Why don't we move along to the main attraction, the park itself? We'll have ice cream for dessert when you get back. Grant is amazed at the variety of dinosaur life that thrives beyond the electric fences. He points out that Spinosauruses are flesh eaters. So who's this coming up behind us? Don't tell me you need more experts besides us. The old man walks over. Nothing that interesting, <laughs> especially when the next item on the agenda is a tour of the park. With that, Hammond bustles the group outside. This storm could get pretty nasty. Nothing that'll harm the system, but I don't think we should leave those folks out there. As Arnold reaches for the keyboard, the weather video display goes off. He tries entering a command in his computer. Nothing happens. The system's frozen. I can't get anything to work. That means the entire security system is offline. Where's Nedry? We need him to fix it. The cover to the end pops off, and Wu's pet leaps into the room. The raptor tears up all of the equipment, ruining the computer system. system is offline. Where's Nedry? We need him to fix it. Hammond leads the group to a building made of reinforced steel. One wall is actually a large archway, 
with an electrified fence covering the entire opening. Don't do this. You'll never get away with it. Grant points out that once it's off the island, he can notify the authorities. They hear an angry dinosaur from the direction of the jungle. Do that and you might find yourself face to face with a T-Rex. Just don't panic. I don't think it's seen us yet. The T-Rex moves toward them. Remain perfectly still. A tracker. It hesitates. Then lets out a mighty roar. Trying to scare its prey into moving. I don't think this was part of the plan. Warm shape of the dinosaur with the dark lines of the fence in front of it. With a sickening snap. It isn't scorched. The fence is no longer electrified. Grant tells the others that the T-Rex has limited vision. If a person isn't moving, the dinosaur can't see it. So, even though we predict how the dinosaurs will react in this environment, according to what we know of them from the past... Before Grant can say anything, the group's attention is diverted <laughs> elsewhere. With a sickening snap, the dinosaur walks through the fence. Must go fast. Shall we climb the fence or try to find a way around it? Yes. Yes.